Hi everyone, I hope you're well. It is October again and so that means it's Halloween season and uh, although personally I am not bothered about it but I know that a lot of people have a lot of fun uh, with it and I have decided to do a glass with a, a very very cute not silly looking ghost. This is a very cheap wine glass, nothing fancy at all. You can see that the top of it has got um, an unfinished uh, lip and uh, I have very roughly sketched this little ghost creature uh, and hanging from the one side of his sheet, if you like, because I imagine it's this is the sort of look of someone with a sheet over them. Uh, is a spider. Got to have a spider somewhere. And uh, why not? Just a bit of fun and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Right, let's get on with it. First up, in the drill, I have a small stone. In this case, a blue stone. It doesn't have to be a blue stone. It can be virtually any stone. I'm looking for something that is a half tone just to put in the basic basic shape uh, of the image. You will see I did a very quick uh, web line from the backside of the spider straight up into the the corner of the fabric. <sighs> that really had to be quite accurate because I'm not going to go over it again and it really had to be exactly in the right spot so do be careful if you do something like that. Um, obviously a quicker flow is better than something slower because you're not going to get any lumpy bumps in the middle but do be careful to be accurate when it has to come from a particular spot. Now here is a small diamond which I'm not particularly happy with. Uh, it was a sintered diamond which I have just cleaned a bit on a white stone. Uh, all it does is take away some of the old grit. A slightly bigger diamond in the drill again now and as you can see I am just doing some basic outlines, slightly thicker. And this will help when I'm filling in the background so that the background large diamond doesn't go over the edges. In my drill now, I have a very large sintered diamond. Now it's quite thick glass down the bottom and so I can go fairly deep and I'm going deepest where the fold of the fabric actually happens. Because like there, where I'm stroking now, we'll have a ridge that the rubber will pick up nicely and will give a rather lovely 3D effect where it um, shades the background. So roughly getting this in, uh, I know it looks a little bit tatty at the moment, but I will be neatening, neatening it up to a certain degree. Uh, this is a funny cartoon. It is nothing special, so I am not going uber, uber neat on this. <laughs> As you can see, I am just enjoying myself and uh, I hope you will too. I like to flick upwards, flicking upwards here, showing lovely strokes. You know I like a brush stroke and a bit of texture. This is absolutely fine. This is a very coarse diamond and while I say that, it is not creating horrible chips in the glass. It is actually creating some really nice bright um, movements in, in the glass, catching that light very dramatically. So it was at that point I decided to think about checking for stress lines, even though I knew this glass 
didn't have a neat lip and there we go bam right at the top a hideous stress line oh that shows up well and on the engraving right where I will be doing some extensive engraving on the top of his head so what do you do now well I'm not gonna panic I know it's there I am not going to go terribly terribly deep and I will avoid horizontal strokes well completely horizontal strokes apart from that one at the top obviously but I, I I've still got this big uh, burr in the drill and I decided that hey if it pops on camera that would be quite good that would be an interesting learning curve for everyone to see how it behaves if I really upset that stress line uh, as it was uh, to date nothing has happened <laughs> so I managed to avoid upsetting it but I was aware that was that it was there it was quite a strong one and so um, it's quite important to know and I'm really surprised because usually when the when the glass has got a funny lip that's not very neat it usually means that it hasn't been an, um, finished off at the top and, and reheated but in this case it obviously has and so it has the stress line because it hasn't been cooled down slowly again anyway we proceed and uh, as you can see uh, he's looking a little bit funny at the moment <laughs> it looks a bit hairy The idea, of course, is to complete the entire ghost as a solid white at the moment. Still flicking up from the bottom and as you will see, flicking downwards blends it so nicely. downwards again from below the mouth blending it with the bottom area I'm not pressing particularly heavily the spur is as I say so coarse I only want the whiteness of it the glass certainly in this area is, I wouldn't say it's very, very fine, of course, but it's not that thick. So there's no need to go particularly deep um, at all, really. It was only on the folds and probably around the eyes and the mouth um, and the nose will be the deepest. bit of uh, lip filler <laughs> okay slightly smaller diamond but actually this one is a very fine one and you can see it is creating a softer area where I've got a fold you're looking at the back of the fabric there we are a sort of a half tone going on there um, which I will still polish with the rubber later on for some reason the folds on the left hand side I didn't I didn't do them very well and I just didn't have the energy to do them as nice as the folds on the right hand side but you get the drift and that wasn't a particularly good fold at all Again, going just around the features, neatening them up a little bit. And here I have a very fine 
diamond. It's actually an interesting shape, but you can use a rat's tail, you can use a very, very small diamond ball. It doesn't matter. It was just to neatly map in uh, some teeth. It doesn't matter what the teeth look like. There are no such things as these creatures. So you, you can create whatever kind of teeth you want. So here I am doing a little bit more depth with a smaller diamond. Do you know that I was actually contemplating cutting out the eyes, the nose, and the mouth entirely. <laughs> Do you know, I was so close to doing that, but I thought the, the, the glass would be a little bit too delicate for something like that. Uh, I probably would have cut some fatter teeth, but actually carved all the way through. It would have been fun, but I think in this case, this, this is fine. It would have also been interesting drinking out of it. <laughs> Feel free to do that if you want. You certainly can. I just popped some spots in the eyes for the moment. And um, just so <laughs> you can see it's already looking at me. Right, some more uh, lip filler going on here with a slightly smaller diamond. And no, I don't. I don't. I don't do fillers and Botox or anything like that. Sorry, it's just not my thing. But I'll do a bit for my ghost. There we are, but neater. Here I'm just adding in just the effect of eyebrows. Isn't that interesting? You can have fun. So there's a bit going under his mouth and, and he's got sort of smiley lines as well. Just running over the edges of the fold of the fabric. It'll give it the impression that it's got a some kind of bias binding lining if you like. Um, or uh, whatever. It's a sort of an outline but it just neatens it up. There are no rules when it comes to a cartoon like this. Okay, here is a uh, what I was hoping was going to be a uh, Dura White, but turned out it wasn't. I ordered them online. They're actually uh, it's so annoying. They are a slightly coarser than um, a Dura White, but they are okay for creating a slightly softer effect that is going to be good for polishing. Um, I really didn't put it through its paces there. I was just messing about. But um, they had assured me that it was like a Dura White. A fine, fine corundum. And it wasn't. Anyway, never mind. Here I have got a grey rubber. And as you can see, very, very roughly, very simply picking up some shadow. You can see how rough the engraving is by the point that it's created on the rubber in no time at all. Here I have my coarser, much coarser rubber. And I am very, very roughly adding in some surface to the eyes, the nose and the mouth. Because rather than it actually looking like it's got a hole through it, it's giving it a sort of an innard. So it's brought it to the surface and made it a solid creature. I've got the rough one again and simply making some oogly boogly scary eyes with it. You can see it's because it's slightly coarser than the, than the other rubber, 
it um, it leaves a mark on the glass. So now I am adding, re-adding the little dots in the eyes, the little highlights, and so we have a much more <laughs> emphasized character. Here I have a rubber disc, which again is very easily picking up the edges where I have gone deeper. Now I do want you to be careful with these burrs. Um, it's a tricky one really. I had one fly off the other day. I had been using it quite extensively. Perhaps it had been in the same, or it probably had been in the same mandrel for quite some time. And uh, before I knew it, it just flew off. And I thought, wow, if that had hit the glass, you know, it flicked off into the glass or something. It could have scratched it in the middle of nowhere and, and that could have been nasty or it could have flung up into my face. So do be a little bit careful that you don't overuse um, these rubber discs on a mandrel. I think there's quite a lot of strain going on there and heat. So perhaps... Not, certainly not so hard, uh, not so fast, and not so. You don't need much pressure, to be honest. Sorry, here I have got a, uh, a rather strange shaped diamond. I was just going over um, those edges. You can see I highlighted the deep edges. I've got a little uh, Jura white here where I'm neatening up an area that was that is supposed to be darker, um, but it was too deeply engraved so appearing lighter so I have taken the Jura white smoothed it out a bit and uh, here I've got a a little diamond Starting to look a little bit neater, really. Back with that uh, rather crazy scented diamond. And time for Mr. Spider. A sort of a medium sized diamond ball. go fairly deep here. I was just creating um, the outline and then a deepness in the middle without spending quite frankly too much time on it by the looks of things. <laughs> I had gone quite deep actually. A little, uh, a little darling we call it. It's a teeny weeny little wheel shape burr which is good for cutting into the edges when you are cameo engraving and but also rather fun for something like this it gives a very substantial cut into the glass quite effective of course I should be turning the glass a little bit more um, but it's difficult when you're filming. I'm, I get a little bit lazy trying to get the angle because it, if I turn the glass, I could easily take the glass out of the view of the camera and I'm actually at an awkward angle as it is. So it's a little bit tricky. I just chucked in a couple of um, uh, texture features on 
the front body. And here I got the tiny end of a flame shaped diamond just to add the little feet. Not sure if they have feet, but anyway, I've given them feet. And uh, obviously I saw something that needed a little bit of neatening on the edge. Decided to sign at this point, even though, quite frankly, I hadn't finished. Random. <laughs> and out with the rubber. This is a, a grey rubber. Put it this way, a slightly softer rubber is what you after here. And there you have it. We have our Halloween ghost and friend. <laughs>